Hey YouTubers, Mike Borch with the Mike Borch channel. Thank you for watching. In today's video, we're going to help you get more familiar with your brand new Gravely Zero Turn mower. Let's get started. All right, YouTubers outside the garage now, and there it is, our brand new Gravely Pro Turn ZX60 lawnmower. It is a zero turn, which is awesome. And what I wanna do is get you more familiar with the mower and all of its parts. In front of me is the owner's manual, and depending on which model you have will depend on which model number it is. Ours is the 60, which means the 60 inch deck. And again, this is the front cover. Go to page 13, and on page 13 it has a picture of the mower, the engine, the control unit, and a pictorial image of additional parts below the seat. And throughout this entire pictorial diagram you have black circles with numbers in them, and down below is a list of all of the parts and the corresponding numbers for those parts. So we'll get right to it. Number one is your fuel tank and cap, and that is right there. We will take our manual with us. Set that down and coming to the fuel cap. This is where you add fuel into your fuel tank. And I highly, highly recommend non-ethanol fuel, meaning recreational fuel. Because recreational fuel is not going to gunk up your fuel system, nor any portion of your fuel system, such as the fuel lines and filter. And the recreational fuel is going to last a long time, which will alleviate you having to worry about fuel going bad in your system, whether it's for short-term storage or long-term storage. So again, recreational fuel. It does cost a little more, but it goes a long way. Way. Back to number two is the fuel lever window. Check this out. Let's go to number two. That is right there. And here's your seat. Right below it on the left hand side of your logo is your fuel lever window. And as you can see, the fuel is halfway full. I will actually rock the mower slightly. And you can kind of see the fuel moving in there so the tank is not all the way topped off. So before we actually start the engine and begin mowing, we will top the fuel tank off. So again, that's how you tell how much fuel you have in the system. There's no actual fuel gauge anywhere on your mower. It's all right there. Number three is your oil filter. And looking at the engine, the oil filter is right here. So let's hop to the back side to the engine. And by referencing number five, which is your engine oil dipstick, just to the left of that down below is your oil filter right down there. And again, number three is your oil filter. Number four is your oil drain, which is this drain just below your filter. And number five is your engine oil dipstick. Let's take a look at number four, the oil drain. So not sure if you have a good look of it. There it is right there. It comes out of the bottom portion of your engine and feeds right there. So that is where you drain your oil from the engine. Back to the owner's manual and number six is your air filter. Let's reference the pictorial image. And again, number six is the top portion of your engine. And this is the Kawasaki engine, which is awesome. A very well-respected, very reliable engine and an extremely popular feature of the Gravely mowers. Now with that said, Gravely does make their own engines now, but they've only been doing it for a couple years. And so the trust and reliability is still in the growing process of the consumer. However, I will say the engines that Gravely are making, they are top notch, but most people are going with the Kawasaki still because of the long-term reliability and performance of the actual engine. Again, inside here is your air filter. And real quick, we have an additional video scrolling above right now that talks a lot more about this engine. In this video, we're focusing on getting to know your entire mower. In that video that just scrolled above, it's getting to know your engine itself. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Back to the manual. Number seven is your ignition key. So let me move this up, set it aside, and here is your ignition key. Here is the off. Here is the on, and here is the start portion. So when it comes time to start, you will switch the key all the way to this, and after the engine starts and is running, you will switch the key to that position, and then off to turn the mower off. Number eight is your choke control knob, and reference this up here, number eight, choke control, which is right here. By pulling it up, that's in the choke mode, or introducing more fuel to the system for starting purposes. In the down position, the choke is fully closed. Number nine is your throttle control lever, which is right here. And right now it is in the turtle position. Every time you're out mowing, this has to be in the rabbit position because if it is not, you are not properly charging your battery while you mow. This needs to be in the rabbit position to properly charge your battery. 
Number 10 is your power takeoff knob or PTO. And number 10, right up here, right here. And you can kind of look at the actual image on the knob itself. Once you pull this up, the blades underneath the deck will begin spinning and cutting your grass. Once you push it down, the blades will stop spinning. And number 11 is your hour. And as you can see, we have 0.1 on the meter. On to number 12, your height of cut adjustment system. Coming up here to number 12, and that is right here. And what I wanna do is hop on the actual mower because I wanna show you something really important. Okay, at this point, I'm on the mower. This lower pedal down here is called your deck lift pedal, and that is number 14, which we will get to here shortly. However, as you push this, it releases tension on this portion here. And again, I mentioned that this deck right now is in the transport mode, meaning it is as far up off the ground as possible. However, to get it in cutting mode, push on that pedal and this little latch right here. Once you push on that pedal down below, you've released the pressure here and watch this. You just lift this up and the deck goes all the way down to the 3.25 position. And anytime you wanna change the height of your deck, you will push this all the way up Pull your knob all the way out and insert it in the desired height. We will keep it in the 3.25 and I will keep it back in the transport mode. Now, number 13 is your transport lock release lever and we just talked about that. And then number 14 is that pedal down below. Number 15 is your rollover protection structure. So let's hop off the mower and go to the rollover protection bar or roll bar. And in the event that you purchased a residential mower, chances are you will not have this because this is mainly for commercial grade mowers. And that is what this is. Back to the manual. Number 16 is your seat adjustment lever. Let's hop to the opposite side. To the opposite side of the mower and there is your seat adjustment lever. I'll hop back up on the mower and place my feet or shoes right there. And by pulling up, you can slide the actual seat forward and now it is pretty far forward, kind of uncomfortable for me. I'm going to pull up and I'm going to carefully shift back to the full back position. And that's the most comfortable for me. However, with this design, you have the option of setting your seat to your desired position. Hopping off the mower, coming back here, this is your seat latch. And by pushing it down, you can actually pull your seat up. So again, here's the lever. Pushing it all the way down releases the locking clip and you can pull your seat up. I'll need both hands. Again, by shifting that latch back, you can pull your seat up and shift it forward to the stationary position shown here. And now you have much better access to everything below your seat. And we'll start with the gas cap again. As you add fuel, it goes down into your gas tank. And as you can see, the gas tank itself basically takes up the whole underside of the seat. And here is where your fuel comes out and passes through the fuel hose and through the fuel filter and then into your engine. And additionally, you have springs for your seat that helps take the blunt of those bumps throughout your mowing, ultimately giving you a much smoother ride. And it's also important to know the residential mowers may have a different size spring or different suspension or seat itself. Again, because this is built for the commercial level mowing. However, if you have a big yard, there's nothing stopping you from buying a commercial grade mower like this. Additionally, you have your battery. You can see the positive red cable going into your battery, the black negative cable. Those are secured and good. To the opposite side, you have your parking brake. As you can see, I still have the plastic wrap on it because again, it's brand new. And when the lever is upright in that position, the parking brake is on. And just by shifting it down, it is now off, but we want it on. So just pull it back up. Additionally, you have a fuse box right here. And just to the right of that, you have a hydraulic expansion oil tank. And there's two of those, one on each side, one here and one here. What I wanna do now is grab the owner's manual and catch up. Again, we talked about the seat latch, the parking brake lever. 19 is the belt cover, we'll come back to that. And a couple other things we talked about was the battery and the fuse box and the hydraulic oil expansion tank. These little numbers mean there are two of them, so again, two hydraulic expansion tanks, one, two. However, let's go back to number 19, which is your belt cover, which is right here. And take a look at this. This is hard mounted and bolted to the deck. And just to the left of it is where you wanna step. Do not step on this. Underneath here are your belts and all your pulleys. And in the event that you step on this and damage it over the years by compressing it, it's going to end up hitting the pulleys down below and damaging the entire system. That would not be good. Additionally, inside here, you've got more pulleys. And here shortly, once I lower the seat, there's an access panel that gives you a better view of all the pulleys and belts. I'll show you that here shortly. From here, I'm going to carefully resecure the seat to the front. 
this access panel comes all the way up and it locks in place. As you can see here, there's all your pulleys and belts. To release this, just pull it forward toward you and slowly and carefully lower that panel down. Back to the owner's manual. Let's talk about number 20, which is the steering lever. As you can see here in the pictorial image, on each side you will have these steering levers and they're pretty neat. And if you're brand new to the zero turn mower world, this is a whole different and unique way of mowing your lawn and maneuvering and managing your mower. It's pretty awesome. Technology has come a long way with these mowers over the decades. On to number 21, which is your discharge chute. Let's hop to the opposite side here. And again, this is your discharge chute where all of the grass is going to be flying out at a high pace. And right now, again, it is in the transport mode and you'll need both hands, one on the right side, one on the left side, and you will pull each side up and that will release your chute. Do not step on that and never, ever, ever put your hand and feet under there while the mower is running. And to stow this, just shift it up and it will fall into the transport latching mode as shown there. On a number 22, the anti-scalp wheels. And you've got one here, two in the middle, one on the far right. And those are very important because as you're mowing, this deck is all the way on the ground resting on those wheels. And as you maneuver your mower over different terrains or through bumps and over hills, those wheels alleviate the chances of your blades striking any portions of your lawn while you're mowing, which is a huge feature with these gravely mowers. And on to transaxle bypass lever, which by looking at this pictorial image up here, gauge where it is, we'll hop to the back side of the mower at the back of the mower right now and come to the rear right side and underneath here you will notice a lever right here see it again that is your transaxial bypass lever and there are two of them one on each side you may see the one over there as well 24 we talked about the battery we talked about number 25 the fuse box and we've talked about number 26 the two tanks underneath the seat so that is it youtubers hopefully now you have a much better understanding and knowledge of your brand new gravely mower and the next thing we are going to do is perform a before start checklist that is very important we are going to check some very important things prior to starting the engine and by checking the these, they will enhance the safety of the machine as well as the life of the machine. So with that said, scrolling above now is a link to the video that we performed the before start checklist. Definitely check that out. We will see you there. So that's it YouTubers. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be awesome and very helpful to us. Thanks again for watching.